So today I figured I'd do a video. Uh, I've gotten some questions on this. Um, plus I just think in general, I think chickens are probably the most common uh, animal for people to have on their property because uh, they're so low maintenance and easy to deal with but one thing about chickens is if you leave them in the same area for too long you're gonna find that they uh, that they can be destructive to the ground um, they can be very beneficial in short bursts but if you leave them there long enough they can be problematic for the for the grass um, and having them around your house for example can also be a problem because they'll jump on your cars and do stuff like that so anyway we opted to build a mobile coop which you'll see right there that's our uh, that's a repurposed uh, stock trailer that we have turned into our mobile chicken coop we have about I would say right now we have we've had some loss but I think we have about 70 chickens in there right now um, and then we have gone with this Premier One poultry netting. And this is really gonna be the focus of today's video, which is this uh, this netting. I find it to be, um, it's very high quality and um, and it is it definitely does its job. Uh, you can see right there, I got some vegetation in it, but uh, it does its job very, very well, but the uh, it, it can be cumbersome to move around. And I've learned some tips and um, I've learned some things that I can offer you guys as tips as far as how to move them around, um, how to move the nets around that is, but it is still very difficult to do. Um, and I've, we went with 160, I think it's 164 foot sections. So if you look out here, this is a, this is going to be 364 foot sections. Uh, in retrospect, I saw, I know, I, I noticed when I bought these that they have also sell hundred foot sections, but me being bigger is better uh, mentality. I thought for sure that we should go with the, the longer runs in retrospect. I wouldn't do that. I would go with the hundred foot runs and just do like we did 364. So that's going to be like, um, 400, almost five, I guess. What is that? 160, 160, that'd be 320, plus 160 would be 480, so 480 feet. I would rather have done 500 foot sections because once you see the, the process of lifting them up off the ground uh, and how you keep them from getting tangled with each other, you'll find that by the time you get to the last few um, sections that you have to pick up, it gets incredibly heavy. Uh, and I'm not a small guy. I don't know that a, uh, I don't know that like a smaller female uh, or smaller male could could do that. I don't think that, I don't know. It, it's very, very difficult once you get to the end of the, the run to pick them up. So if I were going to do it again, even being, um, you know, a relatively strong guy, I, I would still do the 100 foot uh, sections. But anyway, I'm gonna put a GoPro on my chest and I'm gonna go through the process and let you guys, uh, obviously I'm gonna edit it out for speed, but this is gonna be a complete move of that mobile chicken coop right there. We're gonna put it over here uh, and we're gonna take these nets down and move them over here. We may leave that run there just because most of it, it's a straight line and we could use that run. So it'll just be these two sections that come down and we'll make another paddock over here. All right, let's get rolling. I've got, uh, I've got it hooked up on my chest here. We're gonna turn the controller off. Uh, I'm gonna do a video on making, um, of the making of this cart. We have two of these and we're about to build a third one. Uh, but I did actually already make a video on how to make these um, with the speed right controllers. But since we know that the, the next is coming down, we're gonna go ahead and turn it off. Uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and get in here. I would normally just start taking the net down, but we have two chickens that decided not to go in their coop last night. Now I set the door, we have a pretty fancy door set up. So I had set the door not to open this morning uh, and let them out. So they stayed out, these two, must have stayed out last night. And this this is always a fun job. We're just gonna leave that one out because she's not playing nice. Anyway, you can see here at the uh, at the junctions between these two, you put these uh, sturdier posts in, and you can also do that anywhere down the line. They send her two or three of these, I think three, with every uh, net that you buy. So, if you have an area that just seems really weak, you can you can put these in. They're plastic, they're non-conductive. So, but we we just really mainly use them where we connect 
two fences together. And then you can see you have these ties and you'll have one down low. We only use the upper one just because we don't have any trouble. Uh, I think if you're doing a more permanent install, you maybe use both the tie on the top and the tie on the bottom, but we don't. You undo like this. And then this right here is actually how the, uh, how the system is connected. So like for the electricity, we also use this as a clamp point for our, our energizer. So you can just simply pull those apart and now you have them out. So now this is really just disconnected. So what we'll do, what we typically will do is take this net and lay it down on its side like this. Now, when you have vegetation like this, it actually is worthwhile to pull it up because when you go to pick this net up, it can become a lot more labor intensive. But step one really is just pull the net up out of the ground and lay it down on its side. But, and I know this probably seems ridiculous, but you're gonna go ahead and untie. You're gonna go ahead and untie it, even though we're gonna leave this here, just because when you go to pick this net up, it has to be all in one. So we're gonna go back to the beginning. By the leg, or by the feet. And then what I do is grab it. You're gonna hook your hand under. I like to go three of these prongs up. Hook your hand under, and then you walk to the next one. And when you do this, now you see that we folded the net in half. Now you're gonna pick up these two. You're gonna walk to the next spot. Okay, now you got three, and you can see each time you're folding over the excess and keeping it out of the feet. So this time we're gonna pick up, we're gonna come over here, four, five, six, seven, Now it's real heavy. 16, but you can't get sloppy because you will pay for it if you do. You've got 17 or 18, and then now you got your complete set. So now comes the process of pulling the net out. So I'm gonna start with this end one, and you can always tell it's the end one because it's got this thick line on it. And we're just gonna walk this line out. One thing about this net, if you mess it up, stop and fix it as soon as you notice that it's not pulling clean because as soon as, uh, as it doesn't pull clean, it is already ridiculously tangled and it's not going to get any better. Now then. We're right here, right up next to our other post. We'll get our strengthening rod in just a second, but for right now, it's fine. Okay. Yeah. like this, Got a little added area over here, which doesn't matter. Okay, we've got the net up. Now the next step is going to be to, uh, to take these reinforcements 
And at the very least, you got you do need to put these where the two connect because all the pressure goes on there. So I always just take it, put it right between them. Then you're gonna take your little tie guy here, tie it like that. And you're just gonna take your electrode con connections right here, slip them together like so. Yeah, and uh, since we move them so often, I don't even care if they're super, you can make them lock. I am not. I don't do that normally. Mainly just because I don't plan to have uh, have them connected very long and they just need to make connection for. Anyway, we're gonna move the coop itself. So I'm gonna grab uh, our little swinging ramp that we have for them. And then Betty and Grace aren't here. Those, those are our Pyrenees. Um, they're not here today, so we're going to, uh, we don't have to tether them. I'll just let the tethers drag and then uh, and then we'll go ahead and get this coop moved over now we do have one chicken that's under it it'll be interesting to see I think she'll follow but we'll see if she what she chooses to do all right all right now's the big time I'm gonna let him out out in the world fold this ramp down get them uh, Free! There you guys go, look at that. They'll be more than happy to come out, I assure you. That was a successful move, I suppose. It definitely wasn't my fastest. I have found this to either go very, very smoothly or very, very not smoothly. But if you have a, you know, if you have, let's say, an acre or more uh, and you have chickens and you want to get them moving around, I think the net does make a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense, obviously, for larger operations too, uh, where you have more manpower. But even just one person, if you have, if you have just one net that's 160 feet, you can actually make a pretty good little enclosure. And if you had a small backyard, Block, it would make a lot of sense for that all the way up to commercial you know I know that these are used in large uh, laying operations and large uh, and I think I think they, they use it with meat birds as well um, but they are you know truth be told they are it is laborious to um, it is laborious to to move them around like I, I'm sure that the video will show but um, I don't know of any better option you know this is kind of a when you have predators and you have issues like that and you want to keep the chickens in a select area there's there's not a whole lot more you can do i think that the netting is the right way to go about it just over time you'll learn that uh, certain tips and tricks i hope that the video helped you um, and i hope that you know if you have any questions please feel free to comment uh, i really do enjoy helping people out so uh, just leave a comment and i will get back to you